Welcome to iLecture Online, and now we're going to do a trigonometric function. We're going to find the maximum of a trigonometric function, the cosine square of x, and this probably will be a local max and local min because with trigonometric functions like this, you usually don't find an absolute max or an absolute min. So let's find out. Again, to find the places where we have a max and a min, we know that that's where the slope is equal to zero. We'll have to find the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and find those locations. So let's do that. The derivative, f prime of x, in this case, is going to be 2 times the cosine of x to the first power times the derivative of the cosine, which is the negative sine, minus sine of x, which means that this is equal to minus 2 times the cosine of x times the sine of x. That's our derivative, f prime of x. Let's circle that. We'll need it later. So now what we're going to do here is set that derivative equal to 0. So set f prime of x equal to 0. When we do that, we get 0 is equal to minus 2 times the cosine of x times the sine of x. And of course, we can divide both sides by the negative 2. So we see that 0 is equal to the cosine of x times the sine of x. And of course, since we multiply the cosine times the sine and get 0, that means either the cosine of x is equal to 0, cosine of x is equal to 0, or the sine of x equals to 0. Now, just to make it a little bit more interesting, we probably want to limit that function. So let's say that the domain has to be between 0 and pi. So let's do that. So it's going to be limited between 0 and pi. So, and continuing here, if the cosine of x equals 0, what does that mean? That means either x is equal to pi over 2, like 90 degrees, and uh, since we're limited to 0 and pi, that means there's only one possibility. That means x must be equal to pi divided by 2. Otherwise, it falls out of that domain. For the sine of x equals 0, that can happen when x equals 0 and when x equals pi. And both of those are part of that domain. So we can say x equals 0 or x equals pi, which means there's three values for x where the slope will be 0. All right, let's find those three critical points by plugging those points back in the original equation. So we have f of x equals 0 is equal to, when x equals 0, the cosine is 1, 1 squared is 1, so that means the y value will be 1. So our first point is 0, 1. The second point can be found by plugging in, let's say, pi over 2. Let's do that. So f, when x is equal to pi divided by 2, so when x equals pi divided by 2, the cosine of pi divided by 2 is 0. 0 squared is 0. We get 0. So the next point is pi divided by 2 and 0. And finally, the third point is when x equals pi. So f, when x equals pi, is equal to, when we plug in pi there, the cosine of pi is negative 1, but negative 1 squared gives us positive 1 again. So the third point is pi and 1. Those are the three critical points, so let's go ahead and grab those. Here's our y-axis. Uh, maybe I want to put the y-axis a little bit further to the left. So here's our y-axis, there's our x-axis, y and x. So when x equals 0, y equals 1. So 0, 1, right there. So call that 1, call it 0. So that's our first point, and that's where the slope is going to be 0. Second point, pi over 2 and 0. So let's say this, this here is pi divided by 2. And so then, this, then the y value would be 0. The point is over here, and the slope is 0 right there. And our third point is pi, uh, x equals pi. So it would be about here. And then again, the y value is 1, which puts us right up here, our third point, And there the slope is 0. So we have three critical points, one here, one there, one there, where the slope is equal to 0. Again, here that's the point 0, 1. Here this is the point pi over 2, 0. And here the third point is um, uh, pi and 1. Those are the three critical points. What does the function do between those points? So let's see what happens to the function over here and over there. And to do that, we're going to plug in a sample point into the first derivative and see what the slope is equal to because if the slope is positive, the function is increasing. If the slope is negative, the function is decreasing. So using our derivative, we have f prime of x equals a point halfway between these two, let's say pi over 4. So x equals pi over 4. 
that's equal minus 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 times the sine of pi over 4. Now remember, we don't really need the exact value, we just simply need to know positive or negative value. Cosine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2, sine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2, times 2, that's all positive, but we have a negative in front of that, so we know that this whole quantity is negative, which means between this point and this point, the slope is negative, that means the function is decreasing, it kind of looks like that in between. All right, let's try a point between pi over 2 and pi, let's say 3 pi over 2. No, not 3 pi over 2. How about um, uh, 3 quarters pi? That's better. So 3 pi over 4. That's a point in between those two. Let's do that. So f prime of x equals 3 pi over 4. So that would be equal to minus 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4 times the sine of 3 pi over 4. Okay, now, that's 135 degrees. That gives us negative the square root of 2 over 2 times positive the square root of 2 over 2. That's the negative quantity, but then this negative quantity makes it positive again. So that will be a positive value, which means the slope is positive, which means the function is increasing. So the function goes like that. And realizing, of course, that this is a sine or cosine function, and we know that this probably looks like this, like that. And of course, it would continue on like that if it was allowed to go on past this interval. So on that interval, what do we have? Since it includes the endpoints, we have two maximum and one minimum. Is that an absolute? Well, it's the highest points on the graph within that interval, and this is the lowest point. So these are definitely two absolute maximum points, and this is an absolute minimum point on that interval of the graph. And that's how we do that.